Greetings, I am Herbert Erbederb, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this Sherman Firefly. This model is the Warlord 28mm scale kit I built a while ago. If you want to see the build video there's a link in the description and in the card in the upper right corner of the screen now. Enough jibber jabber, let's paint. I primed the tank with AK Interactive Black Primer and Micro Filler, though obviously you can use whichever primer you like. I then apply a base coat of Vallejo model colour Olive Grey, building it up with a few layers. I'm sure there's going to be someone that says that's the wrong colour, but I don't especially care. I quite like the way it looks. This colour is thinned enough to go through my airbrush using Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. Obviously I'm using an airbrush, but you could do this with a regular brush too. It would just take a little bit longer, and you would have to be more careful of brush strokes. And of course, don't forget to paint the turret too. That's an important part of the tank. After that, I apply a highlight using a mix of roughly 3 quarters olive grey and 1 quarter model colour buff. I think it looks better to lighten most colours with buff rather than white. I spray this highlight mostly from above, and very slightly to the sides. I try not to go too heavy with it, but I think maybe I did go a little overboard. I then add a further highlight using the same two colours, this time mixed roughly 50-50. I apply this to some edges of the raised areas like the tops of hatches and things like that. I think maybe I was going a little bit too light with this, but it will probably look a little bit darker after some washes and such, so I just went with it. I then mix roughly two parts olive grey to something like one and a half parts buff. I was kind of eyeballing this. I figured if I used the same colour as before while dry brushing it would look even brighter, because the airbrush applies the colour a little bit less opaque than the dry brush will. I apply the dry brushing using my makeup contour brush, which gives a nice smooth result, almost like I've done this with an airbrush. As you can see, I'm applying this along any sharp edges like those along the corner of the hull top and side, and any raised parts like the lift rings, hatches and things like that. Don't forget to hit the drive sprocket, bogies and road wheels. It's also a good idea to not forget the turret, where I apply this in the same way as on the hull. I applied a fair bit of this to the rounded edges of the roof to try and make that stand out. This technique is pretty easy, but I feel like it adds a lot and helps to define the edges and details. I think the result the makeup brush gives is quite nice. It looks a lot less scratchy than some of the dry brushes I've used in the past. Not that scratchy is always a terrible thing, but sometimes it's nice to have a smooth result too. At this point I'm looking at the model and thinking it's a little bit too light, though I'm otherwise happy with the highlighting. I decided to try applying a wash of Secret Weapon Green Black. This was diluted roughly 3 quarters green black and 1 quarter water. I apply this all over the model, or at least where the green is going to be anyway. I try to apply this fairly uniformly, though it will naturally pool up in corners and gaps. When doing this make sure not to allow the wash to pool up on flat surfaces as it dries, or you'll be left with bad looking tide marks. Make sure to try and get rid of any bubbles for the same reason. I leave it to dry and this is the result. The tank has definitely darkened down a bit. You can still see the colour variation from both the airbrush highlighting and especially the edge highlights with the dry brush, but I feel like it might be a good idea to reapply the dry brushed highlights just to try and make it stand out a little bit more. This time I made the mix roughly 50-50, though leaning a little bit towards having slightly more olive green in the mix. I apply this in pretty much the exact same way as I did the previous dry brushing because, well, I didn't see a reason to do otherwise. It's looking nice and green so far. I was feeling pretty satisfied with this colour, so I decided it was time for some decals. Before that, I apply some gloss varnish to the areas where I plan to put those decals. The markings I chose aren't based on anything specific, I just wanted them to look somewhat plausible and close enough. After all I'm not really a rivet counter of any kind, as long as the model looks right that's good enough for me. I applied a yellow triangle to the side of the turret. I believe this means that it belongs to the A Squadron of the 1st Armoured Battalion Coldstream Guards, part of the 5th Guards Armoured Brigade. At the front of the tank I applied markings that seemed appropriate for that brigade. I'm pretty sure the 52 in the red rectangle is fine, but I know I got the bridging weight marker wrong. I have 30, and I think it should be 33 for a firefly, but 30 was the closest I had, and I didn't really feel like trying to find, order and wait for a correct decal to arrive. 
The decals I've used are a combination of those included with the kit, a separate British tanks decal set also from Warlord, and some tank numbers from the Universal Carriers kit. So they're all Warlord decals, just from a variety of kits. These decals could all be totally wrong, but it looks good enough to me and that's what matters. It is after all, my tank. I chose the name Belvedere for this tank because I thought it was the most entertaining choice from the decal sets I had on hand. I also added a star on the engine deck. I've applied it a little bit off centre to avoid the gun travel lock. I'm not sure if that's historically accurate or not, but I don't really care, it looks fine to me. Next I applied some chipping using a piece of foam. You've seen me do this a billion times, or at least a few times, so I'm not going to go too in depth in the process here. There's a link to the foam chipping quick tips video that I did in the description and in the upper right corner now. The colours I've used here are the usual Vallejo model colour German Grey and model colour Mahogany. The mix is roughly three parts German Grey and one part Mahogany, though I do eyeball it and make modifications quite a bit. This time I added a tiny little bit of model colour London Grey just to see how it might look, and I think it worked pretty well. So it was maybe three parts German Grey, one part Mahogany and one quarter part London Grey. It wasn't much London Grey at all really, just enough to make a difference. Then I used the same colour and a fine brush to apply a few longer scratches and chips in the areas where the foam simply couldn't reach. When doing this go slowly and carefully. It can be very easy to make it look like accidental paint strokes rather than scratches. Time to paint the tracks. I base them with Vallejo model colour black grey. I use a bigger brush for the larger surfaces trying to avoid the drive sprocket. I don't want to paint that grey. I usually find it pretty easy to paint the tracks while they're on the model. I have had a few comments asking why I attach the tracks before painting. Part of the reason is because I don't usually have a lot of trouble painting them while on the tank. Of course this does mean that the top of the treads doesn't get painted, but if I can't reach my brush in there to paint them they're probably not going to be seen anyway. It's also so that I don't lose the tracks before getting around to painting the model, which could be rather annoying, as you might imagine. Once I've painted the larger areas I step down to a smaller brush to get in between the teeth of the drive sprocket and in and around the road wheels. Make sure to paint the inside of the tracks too, even on the upper section. It is pretty easy to forget that. I also use the same colour to paint the return rollers and the road wheel tyres. Of course trying to be neat and not paint the green parts grey. Next I figured I might try something a little bit different with the tracks. I applied a kind of highlight with model colour London Grey. I apply this along the guide horns and the raised chevrons on the tracks. And then I figured why not apply it to the bumps along the sides of the tracks. It doesn't really look good at the moment, it's a bit stark, but I'm hoping it will be much more subtle when the weathering is applied. Then I get the black grey out again and paint the spare road wheels which I totally didn't forget to paint while I was doing the tracks and regular road wheels. I wouldn't do that. I'm going to continue using the black grey for a while on the tank's tools. You could use any colour that you want really, but I feel like it's pretty convenient just to use one colour. I paint these, I assume, gun cleaning rods? These are pretty easy to paint. I'm obviously trying to avoid the straps that are holding them down. Then I hit whatever this thing is. I believe it's a giant wrench for track tensioning. And then the head of the hammer. And pretty much anything else that's made of metal. I might have accidentally painted some of the wooden things metal too, but maybe not? I'm not 100% sure, not being a tank surgeon and all. Most of the tools should be metal though, so I think I'm fine. Things like the shovel head and pick head are obviously candidates for grey. These things can be quite fiddly to paint, but it can be done neatly if you take your time and be careful. You don't necessarily need to use the smallest brush you have for this. For instance, I'm using a fairly big brush here. Just go slowly and carefully and you shouldn't really have an issue. The same thing goes for this cable. Painting something like this could be a little bit daunting for some. It's so long and there's so much opportunity to make a mistake, but just go slowly. Also, using the side of the brush and running it along the top of the cable is a good way to do this. You can use the cable part itself to guide your brush. It's not really that hard. I then paint the pintle mounted machine gun, again using the same colour. I make sure not to paint the ammo box because that should probably be green and it helps to break up the grey of the gun. Also I left the mounting thing green too. I'm not really sure if this should be green but I thought it would be more interesting that way. 
Now for the tool handles and a different colour. I'm not really sure what the most realistic colour for these is, but I like to do wooden handles with model colour cork brown. I carefully applied it to all of the things I thought might be wooden handles. I think I may have thinned this colour just a little bit too much, but it's not so bad doing multiple coats. Of course it does take a little bit longer because I'm going slowly and trying to be careful, but I got there eventually. I then use Army Painter Dark Tone to darken down the metal on the tools I've just painted. Simple enough. I make an effort to only paint the grey areas, but this will also kind of pool around the parts very easily. That's fine as long as you don't go overboard with it. It'll help create the appearance of shadows and help the parts stand out a little bit. If you do make a mistake you can always just blend it into the surrounding areas and call it weathering anyway. Similarly, I apply Army Paint a strong tone to the wooden handles. This darkens them down and adds a bit of variation to the woody tones, just as easy as the previous step. Though it doesn't quite look as convincing as shadows, so I try to be a bit more neat with this. After that I apply a coat of gloss varnish. In this case it's Minotaur gloss varnish, but you can use whichever you like. A gloss coat at this stage means it's time for enamels. The gloss coat should protect the previous acrylic layers from destruction at the hands of the enamel and thinners. First I apply some AK Interactive track wash to the tracks. Please insert hilarious joke about how it's surprising to apply track wash here. I did thin this just a little bit though I'm not quite sure of the exact ratio. Close to 50-50 which with the gift of hindsight I think was a little bit too thin. Maybe next time I'll add a bit less thinner. I apply this to the tracks as neatly as I could. It can of course be removed from places you don't want it, but why give yourself extra work when you can just be neat the first time? I try to be extra neat around the drive sprocket. I found that I had to do a couple of coats to get the coverage that I wanted. Also, don't forget to apply this to the inside of the tracks, especially along the top where it might be easily forgotten. I think it looks okay. The different shades of grey on the tracks are a little bit subtle, but you can see the difference that they make. Or at least I can. I then apply some AK Interactive Dark Brown Enamel Wash for green vehicles. This is a green vehicle after all, so this should be perfect. The main place I apply this is in the gaps and corners, just to darken things down a bit and give the tank an overall grimy and used sort of look. It helps things to stand out, especially things like the applique armour on the sides. I do try to be kind of neat with this, but it's okay to make mistakes. It's easy to clean up anyway. I did forget to film the cleanup part of this, but it's not that hard, and you've seen me do it before. You just need to use a clean brush with clean thinner on it and you can remove any of the dark brown wash you've put down. You can do this as many times as you need to get the result you want. After I've left it to dry I apply another layer of gloss varnish. Both the gloss varnish and the shitty white balance make it a bit challenging to see well, but it seems when I airbrushed the gloss varnish on it removed some of the track wash from the raised parts of the track. I did kind of want that effect, but not quite so pronounced, so I touched that up with a bit more track wash. I then thought it might be interesting to add some fuel stains. I used AK Interactive fuel stains for this which I applied around the fuel fillers, which made sense to me. It's probably not especially realistic that someone has spilled enough fuel to flood past the collar things around the filler caps and then down the side of the tank, but I thought it would look cool, so that's what I did. Maybe whoever was doing the fueling got shot and spilled it everywhere. I also thought it would make sense to get some of this onto the running gear under the spill. Then I added a little bit of dark streaking grime. Not too much though, I didn't feel like a lot was necessary. I apply the streaking grime and then clean most of it off until I'm satisfied with it. I mostly just picked a few areas to streak the grime down from like beneath the straps for the gun cleaning rods, some details on the engine deck and some bits on the turret, but the video was kind of poor because I left auto white balance on like a numpty, so I don't think you're missing much not seeing that video anyway. It is a pretty simple technique. I applied another layer of gloss varnish and then realised I'd forgotten to paint the straps on the tools. I believe these should be leather, so I paint them accordingly with AK Interactive Red Brown Leather. I should have done this earlier really while I was painting the tools and handles, but hey it's perfectly fine to add things and make corrections as you go. This paint is quite thin out of the bottle, which isn't a bad thing, but it does mean that it will take a couple of coats to get a nice solid colour. I really like this paint for leather, I think it looks quite good. To weather it and not have the straps stand out like a sore thumb, I apply some undiluted Army Painter Dark Tone. 
This does go on a little bit heavy, but I think the result is good. It makes them look dirty and used, and the straps blend in quite nicely. So far I'm pretty happy with what I've done, so it's time to apply some dust effects. First, I spray AK Interactive Dark Mud at the lower areas of the hull, mostly the tracks. This is thinned with white spirits, around two parts dark mud to one part thinner. I do this fairly lightly in small bursts so that I don't go overboard with it. I'm not trying to make the tank look muddy, I'm going for a dusty effect. I feel like it makes sense that it would be darkest and thickest at the tracks. I spray a fairly light amount of this onto the turret too, otherwise it might look slightly mismatched with the hull. I follow this with AK Interactive Summer Kursk Earth, mixed at about the same ratio as the previous colour. I focus this more on the upper areas of the hull, and I try not to go quite so heavily as with the dark mud. It's very easy to go overboard with this kind of stuff, and I think less is more. I add enough to give the tank a slightly dirty appearance and then stop. Think about it, and then if it needs more, add some. The worst would be to spend all of that time painting the tank and then just spraying it brown. I think I got it just about right, and at any rate it can be cleaned off with a brush and thinner, even if it would be a pain in the ass. I add one more dust colour, AK Interactive Africa Dust. This is thinned roughly 50-50 thinner and colour, leaning slightly towards more thinner. I spray it very lightly, and only at the top of the tank. I figure that's where the light should be hitting it the most, and the dust might look a little bit lighter on top. At this point I realised the dust kind of obscures the fuel stains, but I waited until after I'd applied the finishing coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish before I did anything about it. I figure the fuel stain should be a bit newer, and maybe doing it this way will make it look as though it's mixed in with the dust a little bit. I still wanted it to have a bit of a sheen to it though, so I apply it over the matte varnish. I applied this in pretty much the same way as I applied it earlier, and I think the result is pretty good. As a final touch I take my 2B pencil and run it along the raised parts of the tracks. Like the chevron patterns on the treads, the bumps along the sides of the track and some of the guide horns. I also add this to the cable and most of the metal parts of the tools. It adds a subtle sheen of worn metal that's had stuff rubbing against it, but it shouldn't stand out too much. And with that the Warlord Sherman Firefly in 28mm scale has been painted and is ready to put down some German big cats. I'm pretty happy with the results I got here, though admittedly it was a little bit rushed because I wanted to get the video done now. Gotta keep that one painting video a month streak going, it's only April. I don't think I've done anything particularly complicated with this paint job. Sometimes simple is the most effective. I'm sure some of the more rivet countery types will disapprove of the shade of green I've used, and I'd like to preemptively say I don't care. It looks fine to me. I could have painted the wavy creamy camo thing at the end of the gun barrel, but I didn't really feel like it and not all fireflies had that so I think it looks fine without. It just means that the tank is a more obvious priority target for the Germans, but that's okay. Just have to shoot them first I guess. That said I will almost certainly add it if I paint another firefly. It's bound to happen one day. I quite like how the tracks have turned out. I think the light grey highlighting on them adds a subtle little something that I like. There are a few spots on the model that I could have improved with green stuff prior to painting, but it just didn't occur to me until after I'd started. Doesn't really bother me a whole lot anyway, so that's fine. It should still look quite good on the gaming table. This tank, Belvedere, isn't really intended to represent a specific tank that existed. The markings are mostly there just so that it looks the part. It does vaguely resemble a firefly belonging to the A squadron of the 1st armoured battalion. Or at least that's what I understood from the marking guides I looked at for suggestions. As usual I have included a list of the colours I used in the description below. Of course these are mostly a suggestion and to show you what I've used. You can use any colours that you like, such is the glory of miniature painting. Hopefully you'll see this tank in a battle report soon. I painted this to deal with Barnaby's German tanks, though I don't think he has anything too scary right now. He probably will eventually though, so I'll be prepared. So that's it, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below, and of course feel free to ask any questions you might have. Also feel free to do things like subscribing to me here on YouTube, following me on social media, and watching me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon or perhaps buying a shirt. Links to all of those things are in the description below. 
As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.